the traditional tunes of the Gars division ceasing now. And of all the rugby occasions in a player's life, this is the one that stirs the emotions. This is the one that brings tears to the eyes. Doesn't matter how hard a man you are, doesn't matter how big you are, when you come out into the, the glare and the spotlight from beneath that entrance, it's a big occasion. The nerves are jangling, but there's certainly one thing, and that is it gives a player the greatest of pride. And I think, Alec, it can often be a relief, actually, to actually step on the turf to get rid of all the show business of the previous week. Yes, the, the feeling down there now, Ray, will just be that uh, one or two players down there will be saying, oh, please, God, let us get out on the park, because once they hit this atmosphere, as some people will hear all the crowd, uh, it'll get rain on top of them. Others will totally ignore it, but you can bet one or two things. There's a lot of nervous lads down there and a lot of nervous tension. Yes, and the, the two chairmen of the respective clubs on the left there, David Poulter, and on the right, Colin Hutton. They look the, the calmest two of all. Colin Hutton, of course, has walked on this turf before. He was the coach to the Hulkinson Rovers side in 64, but David Poulter, a great stalwart for the amateur game in the Castleford area. And just listen to that roar. I think we're well on our way to a 90,000 crowd. People are still packing in at the back. And whatever it is, the biggest crowd anywhere in World Rugby. The players, I'm sure, wanting to savour the atmosphere. Coming out there at the Castleford end and the Castleford side just waving to wives and loved ones in the crowd. Only 36,000 population in Castleford, but 20,000 of that town have travelled down here. And a proud little man there, Roger Millward, MBE. MBE for his services to, to Rugby League, but it'll be his services to Hulkington Rovers, I think, this afternoon that most people will be interested in. And the Wembley turf, as immaculate as ever, and I was on the pitch yesterday afternoon. There's a nice covering of, of grass, Alec, and uh, certainly I think it's ideal for a rugby match. Yes, I think the lads uh, will really be proud to play on this ground. It's a be in beautiful condition, and actually, Ray, uh, we've got magnificent uh, conditions to play rugby. There's not a, a lot of breeze. Uh, the lads should be uh, very happy on the turf. Uh, they should get good footholds, and really, this should be a very exciting game. Yes, and... Des Lynham mentioned that first match in 1897. And what a long way have we come since then in rugby league. What an adventurous move it was when John Leake, a Welshman, proposed in that Marine Hotel in Landudno in 1928 to take the final to London. What a tradition he was starting. And what a stage to show all that's best in rugby league. In Her Royal Highness, the Princess of Alexandra, just chatting there to... Earl Derby, president of the Rugby Football League. And just behind it, on the right-hand side there, Joe Seddon, the chairman of the Rugby Football League. Second time for Princess Alexander at a Rugby League occasion. Presented to cup, the cup to witness in the past. And she certainly seems to be enjoying the occasion of it. Yes, and isn't it nice Ray, to see such a magnificent lady just walking out in the, you know, down the tunnel? And really, she'll appreciate this. And uh, the Earl of Derby, who we stood alongside her, he is a staunch rugby league fan. He's, he supports witness, and we normally have a conversation about it.
the presentation of the two teams by the Earl of Derby to the Royal Highness David Poulter just presenting the coach Malcolm Reilly being coach at Castleford since 1974 the longest serving coach of any one club in the game and a very nervous time there for the skipper John Joyner David Plans just being introduced there. Signed from Doncaster. Tony Marchant, well, he looks to have had a haircut, especially for the occasion. Gary Hyde, surprise selection, brought into the team just at the very last minute, but a very experienced player, Great Britain, under 24s cap. And just look at the size of that little man, Jamie Sandy, Aboriginal from the East Club in Brisbane. Only five foot four. Surely must be one of the smallest players ever to play at Wembley. Well, I think the Royal Highness is telling Kevin Ward there not too hard in the tackles. Kevin Beardmore, Harry Johnson. And this is where the, the real work is done in the forwards. Ketteridge. Another youngster, only 21 years of age. Lot of these players. Been brought through from the Castleford Colts side, great producer of local talent. But here's one man, another man from Australia, Ian French, flown over this week from the Wynnum Manly Club in Brisbane, in the home of that great player, skipper of Australia, Wally Lewis, and the two substitutes. Unfortunate to miss out these two lads, David Rookley and Stuart Horton. But she's probably having a word of consolation with them. John Joyner, I think, just having a reassuring word with his players. And back to the Old Kingston Rovers side. Not the first time here for Colin Hutton. Coach in 64, and his side lost to witness. And David Watkinson, the hooker, Great Britain hooker and skipper. Had a good season this year, what with the New Zealand Test matches. Gordon Smith, the substitute, the little Kiwi who came over here on the tour of 1980 with New Zealand and Hulkington Rovers snapped him up, done a very good job for him. And Gavin Miller, we should look out for this man, number 13. What a find this boy was when he came over from Australia a couple of seasons ago. Very few people had heard of him, but we've surely heard of him now in Great Britain. Played with the Eastern Suburbs Club and was one of the youngest skippers ever to captain the Cronulla side. A Suko Emma, or Zook Emma, as he likes to be known. A local Hull boy. Well, she's certainly got plenty to say to these lads. Paul Harkin, I think one of the contenders, possibly for the Lance Todd Trophy for the man of the match. The Lance Todd Trophy, named after a very famous New Zealand player who came across to this country in 1908, tragically killed in a car accident in the war, and the trophy named after him. And John Dorohy, another Australian from the Illawarra Club. David Laws had possibly his best season to date. The ex-rugby union lad from the old Hymerians Club in Hull. Capped for Yorkshire and Great Britain against France this season. And Gary Prome, the New Zealand centre, playing his last game for Hulkingston Rovers today, going out to Australia after a four-year stint here. He's going to play for the Eastern Suburbs Club. And Mike Smith. Gary Clark. And I, for one, delighted to see George Fairburn. There was a doubt over George playing. Caught a very nasty knee injury. Well, he's not, he's not playing here, Royal Highness. But I bet he wish he was. The referee, Robin Whitfield. Second occasion for Robin. He stand no messing in the game. An ex-player himself played full-back with me at Witness way back in 67-68. And John MacDonald, the reserve referee from Wigan. And the two touch judges. Mr Lightfoot from Bolton and David Booth from Huddersfield. 
big occasion to run the line at Wembley. Probably explaining the arts of running the line. You've got to watch for those late tackles, he's probably seen. And last but not least, Tony Christie, the, the singer, the man who entertained us so well. And we're almost there to the big kickoff. And a friendly wave, Ali. Yes, and uh, I think uh, Ray, uh, Royal Highness has enjoyed that. It's been uh, a very chatty conversation. And, and really, when you uh, think, uh, there's more excitement probably now in the crowd than what there is on the players on the field, because they are now beginning to burst into uh, almost a in the side. I think it's... I think it's so exciting in the crowd, Alec, because uh, I think the game is so delicately balanced. Yes, we are. I, I Cast think a lot of bookmakers uh, have, have made uh, Old Kingston Rovers uh, three to one on. Uh, I don't think there's a lot of people on this uh, on, on this ground would take three to one or even lay it. No. And Castleford now just running one or two rather nervously there. Jamie Sandy, this tiny little wingman from Brisbane, what an occasion for him and John Joyner, a lot will depend on John Joyner, the skipper very experienced player and Bob Beardmore record point scorer for Cass Kevin Ward, this is the man we'll see doing all the hard donkey work in midfield driving the ball away from his own line and Barry Johnson two broken jaws in his career not put him off Keith England Another of this Castleford Colts production line. And one here from the Moor Ends Club at Doncaster. Martin Ketteridge, only 21 years of age. Very young second row pairing. And Ian French. A lot will, re will rely on this lad, this loose forward, Ian French. Just having a word with his man there, David Plange. I think possibly discussing one or two things about the cover. And George Furburn. Great stalwart in the game. Gary Clark looks to have his shoulder padded up. Had that shoulder trouble been coming in and out for about four or five seasons now, playing with the harness on, a little bit like Brian Robson with the Manchester United. And John Dorothy. This is one lad, Alec, that I think will certainly be in contention. Yes, uh, John Dorothy is going to play a big uh, part in the uh, Kingston Rovers. And Peter Johnson, uh, the Australian lad, he'll be enjoying this atmosphere, Ray. I don't think he's been in one final like this, or have not even been at watch a crowd like this, even though he comes from Australia. Yes, and Zoo Kemba, another powerful lad. I'm looking forward to the clash between this lad, Emma, and Kevin Ward. Pair of them, 15, 16 stone. And David Watkinson, the skipper. Had a fine, uh, a fine side. And a final check on the teams, the Castleford side, the coach Malreal, he's been unusually bold in his selections. He's left out David Rookley, who is his equal top try scorer at full-back, centre Phil Payne, Stuart Horton, played in every round, but in come Gary Lord at full-back, a youngster, experienced centre Gary Hyde, and the Great Britain tourist hooker Kevin Beardmore. Very big, strong pack, and those two match winners, number six and seven, Bob Beardmore and John Joyner. No lack of confidence in the Castleford side. But in the Hull camp, well, there was a little bit of lack of confidence yesterday morning when coach Roger Millward had problems. Only named his side at 12 o'clock today. But he'd be relieved to see fullback George Furburn there. Fit after the knee injury. John Dorohy recovered from a slight bout of flu. And Peter Johnson thankfully taking up his spot at number eight, suffering from a stomach bug during the week. But he does lack his international second row, Haig, Hogan and Chris Burton. But nonetheless, very, very professional side. And Robin Whitfield just introducing the little Bunkingston Rovers mask. And what a proud day for that little boy. And for all of them.
And certainly Robin Whitfield looks to be enjoying the occasion already, Alec. Oh, yes, Ray, he's the, he's the man for the job. And you'll find out today that uh, he'll keep full control of the game. It should be interesting to see, Ray, how this game starts, because I think there's going to be an explosion of tackling as soon as this whistle blows. Castleford there in the amber shirts and the black shorts about to get the 1986 Silk Cup Challenge Cup final underway. Big blast on the whistle from Robin. And we're underway. And a difficult ball for this big second row Andy Kelly to take. Just misjudged it, possibly misjudged it, Alec, I think, in the the breeze that's blowing around. Yeah, well, wind. Maybe, Ray, early in the game, he took his eye off the ball and uh, really you've got to roll these balls at Wembley. Jamie Sandy. Good, strong driving run there. Kevin Ward. back tremendous attack from Castleford straight away little chip from Bob Beardmore this was how he scored in the semi-final oh but well taken by George Fairburn the Rovers I think will want to settle the game down Harkin to Kelly. I think we'll see a lot here of Paul Harkin at the acting half back position or the first receiver distributing the ball. There he is to Dorohy. But that's a bad kick. A lot of pressure was put on John Dorohy there. He had to kick hurriedly. And of course, on every occasion in rugby league, the ball must bounce into touch. I think what uh, John Dorey was trying to say then, Ray, that uh, the Castleford player actually touched the ball, but Robin Whitfield obviously thinks otherwise. And a penalty, not retiring. So a differential penalty, kick to touch here now from John Dorey. And that's a little better. Hulkington Rovers won this trophy only once in their history. They beat their near city neighbours hole in 1980. And Kelly again, well, that's the second knock on from Kelly. But play on, good advances there to Beardmore. David Plange. Coming in there, the acting half back position. I think wanting just to get a, a feel of the ball. To Wall. Oh, that's some tackle. I think Hulkinson Rovers certainly know the power of, of David Ward. And Keith England. Johnson to Ketteridge. Oh, and a risky pass to Zukemba. No need for that pass, Alec, was there? No, no, it was a very silly pass there. They'd played the ball out and they'd done it right and give Oakingston possession in a very dangerous position. To Kelly. And I get the feeling already in these early stages that both sides are seeking to move the ball about these wide open spaces. Harrison. Only brought into the side this morning, number 12, Des Harrison for... The injured Hogan. Well, play on. Beardmore's there. Acting in the role of sweeper here, Bob Beardmore, behind his pack. And David Plange again. Good piece of play there from the, the Castleford right wing. Seeing that the pack was in disarray, came to acting half back position, held the ball. Oh, that's a good one. 
from Kevin Ward to Johnson. He's got Bob Beardmore with him. Back inside to Ketteridge. Oh, this is marvellous rugby, but Marchant, but a good tackle by David Laws. Just that final pass there to Tony Marchant going astray. But this is the sort of rugby that Castleford can play. And a hard tackle there on Keith England. Johnson. To Kelly. A good ball to get hold of there, Alan. Yes, and uh, it was nice to see uh, Castleford really living up to the name, Ray. Classy cast, they play and they're called, and that was a, a, just a little sample of what they can do. A lot of nerves at the moment, a lot of lost ball. It can settle down. To Kevin Beardley. Been out for a very long spell, this hooker Kevin Beardmore, an excellent player. Kevin Ward. And he's lost it to John Dorohy. If you just noticed there, uh, John Dorohy has got the ball on the floor now. Every time uh, that uh, Castleford have the ball, he moves round uh, like a banana shaped umbrella to cut the middle of the park off. Park it. No. Well, Paul Harkin looks to be protesting about something, but he agrees with Robin Wakefield. It was ball back. Oh, I think he was uh, asking the touch judge, had it touched somebody's hand? Both of these hookers in contention for the Great Britain squad against... Australia next season, Watkinson, the current holder of the hooking spot, and Kevin Beardmore in the reserves, Jamie Sandy. Well, he's a little wriggler, this lad. Five foot four. I can only remember one smaller player than him playing at Wembley, and that was Gerald Smith, who played for Barrow in the 60s. And at the moment, these amber and black shirts at Castleford seem to be everywhere on the pitch, Alec. Yes, uh, they want an early score, eh? They realise that the side what scores first are always in the driving seat. But uh, it'll be interesting, the, the, the tactics. Bob Beersmore is excellent at doing these, Ray. But George Ferber is also excellent at taking him. Yes, you don't take them any better than George Ferber. And I think that's his old rugby union days at Kelso. He leaps in the air to that. I think he's used to the, the high punts. I think that's the first time Andrew Kelly, the, the lad on the floor now, has actually held the ball, and he'll be very pleased about that, Ray. Yes, oh, tremendous run here. And there's Harrison. But a good tackle by, by Gary Lord. And I think that youngster, number one, Gary Lord, would be glad to get that tackle in. It's a big occasion for him, brought in at the last minute to Mike Smith. He's got Gary Clark with him. Both of these sides, tremendous attacking potential. Harkin, Peter Johnson, that's a good ball. Andy Kelly popping up out on the wing there. Gary Prome to David Laws. Kelly again. Oh, good passing here from Hulk KR. Well, another lost ball. And that's tremendous play, though, Ray. You've got it. That is exciting rugby. It was, just, it was a turnover, actually. They did lose the ball, but uh, what magnificent rugby from Old Kingston Rovers. Gary Hyde. Keith England doing a forwards job here, driving in, settling it down. Very similar, this driving one down, very similar to setting up the Rook or the Mall in Rugby Union, bringing the pack together before launching it across the back. This is what they're doing now. Well, John Joyner was trying to do. Skipper, very experienced player, but that's a good kick. Oh, yes. Crunching kick there from Bob Beardmore. Nothing better than a kick like that for your forwards to move 40, 50 yards upfield without the slog.
Castleford, three times at Wembley, one on every appearance. Huddersfield, Salford and Wigan all were beaten here, but that's a good scrum, a vital scrum for Watkinson. This battle between the two pairs of half-backs, Alex, should be entertaining. Yes, it should actually, because uh, both sets of half-backs have got ability and uh, they both can play football, they both can support the man with the ball, and really, it'll just depend which uh, pair of half-backs uh, get on top, Ray. Emma. Ten minutes gone, still no score each. We haven't seen a lot of uh, Gavin Miller come in the game yet, have we? Yet? No, I, I've, I've heard well, a little whisper, uh, Red, that he, he pulled out of training with the uh, hamstring trouble. That's a beautiful pass to Mike Smith. He's got Gary Clark outside him, but Sandy's covering. Good tackle. Excellent tackle by that number one, Gary Lord. Mal really brought Gary Lord into the Castleford side for his defence. Oh, and another good kick from Paul Harkin. Time and time again this season, we've seen this scrum half punish sides with those long grubber kicks down the touchline. I think actually Ray has just said to himself, uh, well, what the, my uh, opposite number can do, what uh, I can do, and uh, he's put uh, Ulkings and Rovers in a very strong position because if he held his scrum, uh, I think they could be in a great chance. Yes, an offside. Well, what will John Dodder he do? Can't see any real reason to put this into touch because they'll be taking the tap penalty on the identical spot. They could have taken the tap penalty then. <laughs> but I think it possibly gives him his side time to settle down and get a, a set move on. Here is one to Miller. Harrison. I don't like the way that uh, Gabby Miller eh, he's got this uh, big strap in the, the you know the number 13 he's got a tremendous uh, strapping round his thigh and if he has got a problem with the uh, hamstring trouble I, I think uh, you know they are going to be struggling Gary Prohm and there is the strapping and he certainly looks to be favoring that left leg that's a good ball to Johnson Paul Harkin in at every movement, attempted drop, but no, to low. It was worth an attempt, I think, if the side can just get one or two points early on the board, it's so much for confidence. Ian French. Award. This is the job we said he would be doing, clearing his lines, taking a lot of steam out of those forwards. Notice it takes three forwards to tackle him. To catch it. But not a good kick. Straight to Gary Clark. And Clark there, eager just to take the ball away from the touchline. He knows his side have got five more tackles now. To Harkin. Kelly. And Mal really going through agonies. He was here as a player in 69 and 70 for Castleman, but it's worse as a coach, I think. Oh, here's a good chance to Gary Pro, but a crunching tackle from Kevin Ward. More of a shoulder tackle than anything else. And I think that hurt Gary Pro. He's a big man. He's played loose forward in the past. But nice to see. Bob Beardmore, the Catholic scrum half, saying, are you all right, Gary? And just a nod of the head, he is. Beardmore to put the ball in. And Watkinson takes the one against the head. Dorothy. Further. Oh, good ball to Mike Smith. But well covered by Tony Marchant. J.B. Sandy. Well, he's weaving, he's dodging this little lad when he gets the ball, Alex. He's a tricky little customer. Uh, I'd like to see him when he, he gets a straight run because he looks a, a very strong little boy and uh, it'd be interesting if he did get a clear feel out what his pace would be like.
John Joyner to Bob Beardmore. That's a crunching tackle from Zukema. No favours asked, no quarter given there. But Keith England. In French. It's heavy war. A little bit too much passing, Alec, at the moment, isn't it? Yes, and uh, there's far too much rugby being played down the middle. Look at this little fella. He'll be on Valium, he'll be on everything, this fella. He's, uh, he's the most nervous man. He'll, not, he'll have a fag in his mouth in five seconds flat. And I wonder what he's thinking there. Parking, good break. He's looking for support. Just couldn't get there. Both sides looking to break down that defence. 15 minutes gone, still looking for the first point. Back to Dorothy. Oh, that's another piercing kick. Good kick from John Dorothy. Both this man, Dorothy, and his half-back partner, Harkin, really brought the art of grubber-kicking back to rugby league. And already we've got a... I think it looks like uh, David Rookley, uh, Ray. I, I, I can't see any injuries on the Castleford side, but uh, it may be just a precaution that uh, there is a slight knock with one of the players. Beardmore. And he gets the ball. Sensibly not passing the ball there, Bob Beardmore, waiting for his pack to regroup. To Ketteridge. Tony Marchant. Oh, that's a good break. He slipped Gary Prome. Just couldn't get the ball away on the inside to Gary Hyde. To Johnson. Beardmore. This is a good, good movement here. Ward Marchant. He's got Jamie Sandy outside him. Well, he beats George Furburn. But good covering back from Gary Prome there. The New Zealand centre saved the danger. But Cass on the attack. Johnson. Excellent ball skills, this number 10, Barry Johnson for Castleford. And the third up and under there from Beardmore. But the third time we've seen George Fairburn take that. Make the rocket you brought to this lad. And Kelly just holding the ball, quite content to bring it away. A little bit of panic in the ranks for Hunkinson Rovers, Alan. Yes, and, and looking at one or two of the forwards, uh, you know, this ground seems to have uh, been taking its toll. There's one or two of the forwards look very uh, heavy-legged indeed, Ray, and it's early on in the game. Well, here's a lad who isn't heavy-legged, David Laws. They don't give this lad a yard, had a very good season, capped against France this year. Arkin to Dorothy. Looking to punish Castleford again, but doesn't quite make it. Well, he looks like the little mascot that you hang in front of the coach, Alex, but he's certainly <laughs> he's effective, He's a very small he? fellow indeed. I think some of these people are so small, they're actually going over the top of him. Ian French looking to put a bit of pep into this Castleford side now. Johnson to Wall. No, Wolves' ball. Peter Johnston, good run here from this... Prop forward. Our Australian viewers will be interested in him, those watching us in Sydney. The Canterbury Banks down prop. Settled in well here with Old Kingston Rovers. I think, Ray, looking at this game now, there's got to be a problem with Gavin Miller. I've never seen Gavin Miller, uh, you know, in such a, a quiet game. He's, he, he looks as though he's anywhere the ball is, he doesn't want to be. George Furber. No. He weighed up the situation with George. He knew that the outsides were marked. But a bad kick. And just look at Roger, he's biting his nails already. Still in the first half. We'll find out where ten other ten minutes will be down to the knuckles. 
and Gavin Miller not quite got himself in the game so far usually rough and robust this lad reminded me of the great Australian loose forward Johnny Raper the same sort of style direct going forward I think we can do with the try now, uh, Ray, now, don't we? I think they, they've settled down uh, with the nerves. Oh, that's a good pass from Kevin Ward. Marchants, he's got David Plunge on his outside. He's done it, but he's going to the line, and he must make it. Oh, magnificent opening try there. What confidence there in Tony Marchants. I, I think, just like those Castleford supporters, felt that the ball should have gone to David Plunge. But he put the bit between his teeth, and it was a try. Oh, what a magnificent try for Castleford. Tony Marchant here, Great Britain centre. Kevin Ward holds the ball. Tony Marchant in support. This is a tremendous try. This needs scoring. This wanted scoring, and he wanted to score. Doesn't he open his legs out? Doesn't he stride him out? And he'll be very, very happy in that. Yes, excellent try for that. And Bob Beardmore saying, come on, that's not enough, lads. Four points to nil, hasn't won this cup yet. But real confidence from Tony Marchant. Another of these Castleford youngsters, 23 years of age. And I'm viewers in Australia, Wyndham Manley, watching this in Brisbane. He'll be out there joining them. Flies out this week to play for Wyndham Manley. They'll enjoy and appreciate that try. Kettridge attempts to convert and he gets it. So Castleford break the stalemate, much to the delight of their fans. And a tremendous piece of rugby here from Tony Mike. Notice how he watches David Laws and that confuses Laws. The Hull KR wingman was expecting the ball to go to Plange and then doesn't he just stride out? No problems, confidence in his own pace. And a shot for Rovers, Ollie. Yes, uh, but we did say that uh, a try was needed, and what a try it was. Tremendous effort, and uh, we'll now see that uh, the efforts that uh, Oakings and Rovers can do, because I think they've got one or two problems with, with some of these players. You don't take players to Wembley, Ray, if they're only 85% fit. Well, time will tell, and this could be one of them. There were hints about him having a slight pull hamstring, and certainly... We've not seen this turn away loose forward as we normally do. He's carrying that left leg. Back to Ketteridge. And I'm pretty sure coach Mel Reilly has told his Castleford side, play the game in Hulkinson Rovers half. Very shrewd tactician, Malcolm. To Gary Pro. Peter Johnson. Having a good forceful game, this this Johnson. Six foot fifteen stone Australian, Canterbury Bankstown in Sydney. That's a good ball to Kelly. Just wasn't running onto it. Andy Kelly there could have been. A couple of yards deeper to come onto that ball. Oh, that's a nice chip from Donahue. Just couldn't take it. But well judged by this youngster, Gary Lord. Bob Beardman. French. to Johnson likes to hold the ball in one hand this number 10 Barry Johnson good slate of hand can often ride the tackle yet get the pass out but here's one lad who likes to run at the opposition Kevin Ward Alec doesn't he yes he, he's got a look of uh, Barney Rubble when you, when you look at him in, in, by the face Ray but uh, he's a big strong lad and got some pace oh that was a dangerous ball if Gary Prone could have got hold of that and I think, accidentally, he caught Barry Johnson. I 
And I do hope it's not that jaw. No, I think it's it's around the windpipe. Very game lad this to come back after a couple of jaw breaks. He did consider retirement at one stage, but his love of the game brought him back, and he's just taking a rest. Pro. Ferber. Back to Miller. Harrison. And Hulkinson Rovers really passing flat, not really coming on at depth. These, these big second rows are taking the ball standing still. 15 minutes to go in this half, still Castleford 6. Rovers nil. that one try from Tony Marchant and the conversion from Ketteridge. And a penalty. I've never yes. seen anything like this way here. Uh, Oakington Rovers actually looking to the bench uh, to ask what to do. And uh, in a position like this, I think uh, really, you know, this fella, he's not giving him any inspiration whatsoever off the bench. And uh, some of the lads on the field really don't know what to do. Well, he's a shrewd enough coach, Roger Millward. I'm pretty sure Harry Key will have weighed this game up. You know as well as I do that once you get out on that field, it's up to the players, and it's up now to John Doherty. And I really do think Hulkingston Rovers need a couple of points. Not just to narrow the deficit, but I think to give them confidence. It could be a good kick if Doherty gets this. 40 yards out. Straight between the posts, but John Doherty has got to judge the swirling wind currents that you get here although he was telling me that he, find, he thinks he'll find kicking here very similar to the Sydney cricket ground where the wind tends to swirl around the same he's kicked 98 goals and two drop goals this season had a very good season in British rugby league this is important oh and it's a good goal it's an accurate one. Struck that well, did Dorothy. Two points for his side, and let's hope, I think, if this kick will give them confidence. And this is John Dorothy. What a lovely kick. He's one of the natural kickers. Head down, follow through, just like playing golf. Yes, Mr. Cool, they call him in Australia. Ketteridge, I think, looking to get the ball deep in this 25. Now, what's Donaghy doing? Well, I couldn't understand that, Alec. You've just received the ball from the kickoff. You've got six tackles, and you immediately kick it back to your opposition. Yes, and that, that strikes me very funny, uh, that, you know, you've got possession. And uh, one or two of these lads carrying knocks, very tired, uh, because it's they've only played 30 minutes, and uh, they're giving Castleford the ball back. Keith Ingham, strong weight trainer, this lad, known to his, his teammates as Beefy. Ketteridge, a lot of effort, a lot of energy in this Castleford second row, these two youngsters. Bob Beardmore, that's a good driving run from French. Six tackle coming up. Back to Beardmore, how many times have we seen him pumping this ball through? Oh, well taken by David Laws. And a good run by Laws. Excellent relieving run, though. That's good play from David Laws. Uh, Ray. He looks like one of the men when he gets the ball to have that little bit of pace. He, he looks as though he's got into the game very quickly, and he looks a strong lad. Emma. And it's interesting to see, Ali, that the sun is breaking through again. It was beautiful and warm this morning. It then went very cool, and it's certainly going to get hot, I think, now down in that stadium. It'll be interesting also, Ray, to see what kind of uh, Old Kingston are going to produce because, you know, they are playing one-man tight rugby where normally they throw this ball out wide and they're not doing it today. There's Harrison. It's surprising, though. One spark, one try, one, one pass can suddenly bring you back in the game at Wembley. Back to Dorothy. Oh, well taken. A lot of confidence, this Gary Lord. 
Well, indeed, confidence with tackles right now. Didn't he just run into those two Aussies, Miller and Johnson? To Sandy. And a penalty. Robin Whitfield just indicating there a penalty. Malcolm Reilly and Roger Millward, great friends, great playing colleagues, but not speaking to each other at the moment. Just ten minutes to go in this half, and I think Castleford will settle for this lead at 6-2, Alan. Yes, I, I think they, they deserve the lead because they've, they've took the chances. Uh, I am a little bit concerned about Hulkins and Rovers that not one of the players uh, want to run with the ball. They all seem to want to lay the ball off, uh, and nobody wants to actually make the break. Well, here's one lad who does want to run, Keith England. Lots of energy. Johnson, nice switch to Orr, an equally good switch to Ian French. He's looking for support, just couldn't get the ball away. Excellent close support forward work there. Good passing, Beardmore again at the hub of things to John Joyner. Back to Johnson. Yes, play on, but no. And I think Robin Whitfield's given an offside decision, accidental offside. He allowed play on, very good piece of refereeing, but when Hulkinson Rovers couldn't take the advantage, it couldn't go back again to Castleford. And a good battle here between these two packs. Castleford heel against the head. John Joyner. Very big lad, John Joyner. 14 stone. Wants some pulling down, this Great Britain player. Castleford on the attack. Gary Lord looking to get in. Johnson. No. Beardmore. Oh, good pass to French. Not really going anywhere, though. I think it would have been far better to have kept out on the outsides. Came back into the pack. Kevin Ward. To hide. All good dummy. And the sixth tackle. Now, is it worth a drop goal? It is from Beardmore. And it's there. It's one point. Good piece of play by Bob Beardmore. And in fact, I think those forwards may have been playing for that, Alec. May have been driving to the post, ready for the drop goal. Yes, I, I think uh, it, was a, it was a work plan. And I, I, I think what they've said was, uh, we, we've set ourselves up for this. Right back to Bob Beardsmore. Takes his time, practically takes the lace out of the ball. No problem, straight between the middle. Yes, prolific point scorer, but Bob Beardmore. Seven points to two for Castleford now. Who's in confidence, this Castleford side? Never lost at Wembley on the three previous occasions. Always been here as the underdogs, and yet have turned up trumps for the bookmakers in the end. Will they do it again? Keith England. That's a good pass and well taken. Oh, and well linked up by Lord. And another good pass. The Castleford players, Alec, running onto the ball with enthusiasm and coming on from depth, Alec, aren't they? Yes, they are. And they're getting, I think they've got the feel of the ground now, Ray. I, I think they realise now that uh, they, they've got over all the emotions and uh, the crowd's not getting too many more. They, they realise that they've, they've got to run with the ball and they're supporting the man with the play. To Johnson. Yes, Mal Riley can be confident. Ward using this prop, Kevin Ward, as the battering ram, attempting to suck in the Hulkingston Rovers defenders. Should be moving it out now. Johnson. Oh, that's the sort of pass we almost see from Barry Johnson there. One handed, putting the pass around the man. Another high kick. Fairburn's under.
Oh, Kingston Rovers had a very hard-fought campaign to get here. They beat their local neighbours, Hull in the first round, York in the second, Lee in the third, and really had a struggle on their hands. 24-24 in the, the semi-final and pulled the game round with 12 men and then took the replay at 17-0. So they may be losing at the moment, but lots of character in the side, Alec. Oh, yes. Uh, I'm just looking along the line, Ray, to see uh, which man is liable to produce that spark of rugby which they, they require. Because at the moment, uh, Castleford are dictating the player. They're playing one-man rugby and supporting the man with the ball. And really, Old Kingston look a very tired lot. And I'm sure Roger Millward, just five minutes before the half, he'll have a lot to say at half-time. Certainly, I think he'll want more pep, more bounce from his forwards. Amazing how the ball's going against the head in these scrums. Yes, he's, he's a good hooker, uh, Ray uh, Watkinson, and uh, he, he will get most of uh, the balls what uh, are going. But uh, Castleford now, really, what they'll be thinking about is can we hold Old Kingston until half time? Because it'll be a very bad time for Old Kingston to score a try now. Yes, Rovers could do with something now. Miller, that's a good pass to Harrison. But once again, I got the feeling there that when Miller gave that pass to Harrison, he wasn't running flat out. Harkin, Dorothy, trying to get the ball going. No need to miss the man out there, really. He had a 3-2. to two. Harkin. Paul Harkin looking to take the scrum there, but needs a little bit of inspiration there behind the scrum. It'll be very hard working those packs now. Temperature beginning to rise there as the sun beginning to peep a little bit through the clouds. And a penalty, yes. Correct decision there by Robin Whitfield. Hulkingston Rovers pack not allowing Castleford to get down, driving forward, just explaining it to the players. Just three minutes to go to this half. I think settling the play down. I'm certain skipper John Joyner will settle for this lead at half time. He'll not be bothered, I don't think, about actually increasing it at this stage. He'll play through these tackles, keep the ball in midfield. That's what he's doing here with his forwards. Beardmore. Oh, but that's a good pass. And that's a silly one. Kelly, and that's a good pass to Probe, he's got a chance here, has he got the legs, I think he has, he's going in for the try, Jamie Sandy, and that all came from that silly pass, and suddenly Gary Probe, in his last match for Hulkingston Rovers before he pops down under to the Eastern Suburbs Club, he said the well, tennis is alight. Castleford cannot believe, the, uh, <laughs> Lord Kingston can't believe the look here, Rob Beardsmore, and he'll never ever forgive himself here when he, and, and it was bully England. Cannot believe a lovely ball from Kelly, Gary Prome, a formality, this fella, just right down the middle of the park, comes down all the way, and Old Kingston needed this. Certainly a shot try there from Gary Prome, but he had the strength and he had the pace to get there. And can John Dorothy put Rovers in the lead? And just at the stage when we were saying that Hulkinson Rovers had problems, that Hulkinson Rovers were looking somewhat tired, up top Gary Prome, and he was in. A minute to half time, and what a time to score, Alec. Yes, uh, we, we, I did say, Ray, that uh, Castleford mustn't allow Old Kingston uh, to score a try before half time, but nobody expected a try like that. Yes, and it all came from that bad pass. Not a difficult kick for Dorothy, but a kick certainly with a lot of pressure on. 
Mr. Joe Cool, they call him. And this would be his 100th successful kick of the season if he gets this. And he misses it. A lot of pressure on Dorohe. It looked a simple kick, but who knows what's a simple kick unless somebody has actually kicked here at Wembley with a 90,000 crowd and sound buzzing around your ears. But there's the hooter. The half-time whistle gone. Castleford trooping off, and I'm sure that although their coach Malrini would be delighted to go in leading at seven points to six, I'm pretty sure that Roger Melwood, the, the Hulkinson Rovers coach, he'd be delighted at that try because I think that's brought his side back in, Alec. Yes, but I don't know what he's going to say to Gavin Miller, eh, because I definitely think this fella's playing 80% uh, fit. I think he's only firing on two cylinders. Well, nevertheless, I think we're in for quite a few tries in the second half. Both defences are looking a little bit sloppy. I think there's a lot to do in this game. Yes, as you say, there's not much in it, just that one point. Castleford seven, Hulkingston Rovers six, but I'm very, very sure that uh, Hulkingston Rovers have gone into the second half time there in much better heart with that try. And what a shock try, too, from Gary Prome. Really came from the slip pass. But I think it's brought to life the stadium, Alec. Yes, it has, Ray, and uh, it's, a, it, it's been against the run of play, but uh, I'd be interested to uh, hear what is actually wrong with Gavin Miller. Will Roger Millwood uh, do something at half-time? What will he say to him at half-time? Because they definitely need a flash of brilliance like they've just had from uh, Gary Prome. Because Castleford have looked the better side, they've been doing the basic rugby right, and uh, they've scored a very, very try good try through margins. Well, the crowd at that end, uh, rising to the Castleford heroes. John Joyner leading his side on the pitch. And I think this very big crowd must be approaching the 90,000 surely enjoying this match very tight very close but some good rugby being played just interrupting Ray there for a moment because an important change there you'll see it's Dundee nil hearts nil we were misinformed about a Dundee goal it hasn't happened which is great news for hearts fans and if that were to stay the same then hearts would win the title they need a point uh, today north of the border Celtic need to score four but they need hearts to be beaten but the score is Dundee nil hearts nil not one nil in favor of Dundee as we were misinformed earlier on back to Ray French and Hulkingston Rovers coming out on the pitch that I thought with a little bit more bounce and a little bit more spring in the step I think the coach Roger Millward probably had a good word with him he's probably g'd them up but all to play for just that one point there, the drop goal in fact from Beardmore, that's the difference. And the man who scored that try, excellent centre play, used his wingman plans to good effect. Fooled David Laws. And Her Royal Highness Princess Alexandra coming back. I think she must have enjoyed the first 40 minutes. Let's hope this second half is just as good. The Earl of Derby looking after her. So Robin Whitfield then about to get the second half underway. And John Dorohy to restart. Again, kicks it deep. I think they'll want to... Uh have a little bit of time in the Castleford half, Ray, in the early stage of this first half, they'll realise that the longer Castleford's in front, the harder they are they're going to be to beat. Sandy. Bob Beardmore having a good game there, bringing this... Looks forward, Ian French onto the ball, running well off Beardmore to Johnson. That's a good pass, that cut out Dorohy. Joyner inside to Lord, good linking up, back to Marchant. Very elusive customer, this Tony Marchant. Had a, a call this week from uh, 
Cliff Watson in uh, in Australia and uh, other good uh, friend of ours over there and uh, said one or two players to look out for. I think there's only seen some good players in Great Britain now. Well, it's uh, nice to hear uh, hear about uh, people like Cliff Watson and Brian Child. I hope all the people in Australia and uh, New Zealand are really enjoying the game as much as we are. It's a tremendous game and uh, they look forward to seeing some of these lads over there. Peter Johnson. Emma. And the temperature beginning to rise there now, Alec. It's really hotting up here in the stadium. I think it will be uh, begin to rise down on the field in a few minutes if uh, this score stays like it is, Ray, because Old Kingston really are not throwing the ball about like we're used to seeing, and uh, they look very, very uh, straightforward play. To Ferber. Well, a bit of a gamble, this selection, but that's a good pass again to Sandy. Can't he beat a man, this little man? And he loves his game, he's tapping the ball to himself. Back to Johnson. Ketteridge. Bob Beardmore. Controlling things this scrum half, Bob Beardmore. I know he feels he's got a lot to prove to the Great Britain coach, Maurice Bamford. Left him out of this summer training squad. And there's a big strong prop who's been put into the summer training squad. Kevin Ward picked to put a bit of beef into that front row. Beardmore again. They can shape it's a dangerous one. Probes relaxed, and it's a try. Yes, a little chip. And I don't think Gary Probe realised what was happening. But Bob Beardmore, he got round the back of Probe. Probe just stood there, Alec. Well, really, what you've got to say here, this is very, very bad play indeed. Good play by Robert Beardsmore, but just watch Gary Prome here kick the ball dead, but never do this, and Bob Beardsmore does get there. Yes, just how casual can you be? I don't really think Bob Beardmore ever envisaged scoring this try, but Gary Prome, he seems to freeze just there, and it's a try. And we saw Bob Beardmore, he picked up two tries in the semi-final. And he picked those up from nothing, both close in. And there's another. And again, if you're going to score a try, the time to score a try is either side of the, the half-time. Well, this is it. I cannot believe this. Bob Beardmore surely couldn't have hoped to score off this, but Gary Pro, he must have had a blackout. And I think as well, Alec, we noticed George Furburn was actually slowly coming across. I think he thought Gary Prome had uh, had covered him. But difficult kick for Ketteridge. Well, he's curled it round, no, just to the right of the posts. Eleven points to six for Castleford now. We'll have to see now, Ray, what effect that has on Old Kingston Rovers because uh, that could be a really crucial part of, uh, of this game. It was a really bad try, uh, something Old Kingston Rovers could have done without. And that's a silly mistake. Roger Millward, the coach for Rovers, doesn't look too happy. I'm sure he'll want to know what Gary Prome was doing there. And a drop out beneath the post. To Kelly. Gary Prome. That's a good pass from Smith. That's a good ball to Furburn. This is better from Hulkingston Rovers now. Prome. To Harkin. Johnson. This Castleford defence 
very strong, very tight. Coming up in purse to the tattle. Harkin again to Emma. I think Paul Harkin could do with missing one or two of the men out, but there's a high kick. Well, he's missed it, Johnson has it. Here's pressure now, six, six tackles now for Hulkinson Rovers. What can they do? Dorothy to Miller. Good pass to Gary Prone. No, good tackle. Excellent tackle from Keith England. Prone was looking for the line there to Harkin. Dummy. But well read by Kevin Beardmore. Good pressure from Hulkinson Rovers here to Dorothy. Johnson. I think uh, Old Kingston Ray could do with a try here because they're putting the pressure on and in the right position. To Miller. Well, it's a melee. Robbie Whitfield, uh, I don't think he knows who's got the ball. I think he's waited till somebody comes up with it. And it's Castleford. And a timely ball to come up with uh, from the fullback, Gary Lord. When people talk about Wembley nerves, it's strange to see Cassiford looking very confident, yet not a single member of the side ever played at Wembley before, Alex. That's right, well, it affects you in different ways, Ray. It rather makes you into a great side or it destroys you, but I am very, very concerned uh, with the way Gavin Miller is playing in this game. Surely Roger Millwood would be far better off bringing uh, a 15, uh, number 15 on who is fit, because Gavin Miller is definitely not fit. George Ferber. Oh, good tackle. This lad, Keith England, number 11, getting through a fine stint of tackling for Rovers. Johnson. Well, he lost the ball, Peter Johnson, but he lost it going backwards, so it's not a knock-on. Emma. To Harkin, to Miller. Well, a silly pass, a sloppy pass again. Hyde gets it out, but no. Referee Robin Whitfield spotted an offence, a knock-on. And certainly, as you were saying, uh, Gavin Miller looks to be struggling. He doesn't look happy with his game. We know the sort of quality football this lad can play. Has been the best loose forward in Great Britain this season, and certainly not producing the game on this match. That's a good heel, Dorothy. But good work there, any, any young loose forward watching, number 13 there, Ian French, came out of that scrum well, covered a cross field. Castleford still, 11 points to six in the lead. Zoukema hurling his 15 stone there at those amber and black Castleford shirts. And Kelly, I get, I get the feeling that this Rovers pack is coming a little bit stronger now, Alan. Yes, they're going to have to do as well, Ray, because they're doing uh, very little else, and uh, they're not relying on the three quarters. I think it's man for man play, just slipping the ball to forwards and hoping that there's going to a break's going to come from it. Harkin, that's a good ball. But no. Mike Smith knew that it was the six tackle. He elected to take the chance of a scrum. Just ten minutes gone in this second half. <laughs> Referee there, Robin Whitfield, keeping a tight rein on the game, having a very good game. The second occasion at Wembley. Refereed here in 83. And a penalty. Fine tradition of witness referees here. Robin Whitfield is following. When you think we've had Ronnie Campbell, Mick Norton, and George Phillips, pre-war. Tremendous tradition that witness has produced. Oh, and that's a good kick. Castleford. Ketteridge.
to Beardmore. Oh, good ball from Johnson. But Ian French, well met in the tackle there. Beardmore. Kevin Beardmore. Harkin. Well, this little lad, Paul Harkin, he was here to Wembley in 81, and he's not giving up, he's pushing his side on. To Miller. Watkinson. It still doesn't seem anybody, Ray, in this old Kingston side that's uh, willing to run with the ball. It's uh, turning the ball back in the, in the middle, and it's just suiting Castleford. Uh, Oh, that's a good pass from Emma. Johnson, he's got Gary Brown with him. He delayed the pass, but I think he had to do. David Plange was shadowing Gary Brown. Oh, and that's a bad knock-on. Well, David Watkinson, he's the skipper, and he looked to the man who passed him the ball, but I'm sorry, David, you had your eye off the ball when that came to you. It definitely wasn't the passer's mistake. Must keep your eye on the ball when it's coming to you. Oh, and that's a good scrum. There's some drive going in there. And a penalty. Yes, Castleford scrum half there, Bob Beardmore. He knew that his side were being pushed back. It was a despairing effort. I think he knew that Hulkingston Rovers had the ball and he risked being offside and he was penalised. A differential penalty, of course. He can't go for goal in rugby league. The only time he can go for goal at a scrum is for foul play. Andy Kelly. Harkin, Dorothy. This looks promising, George Furburn. Peter Johnson. But there's the problem with Hutchinson Rovers. One forward coming, Johnson looking for support play there, nobody following on. The two half-backs, Dorothy and Harkin, trying to create the play. But that lack of flow between the half-backs, forwards and three-quarters. Harkin, Miller, Pro. With all this pressure, uh, Ray, you know, Old Kingston Rovers have got to put some points on the board because they're, they're, the more they're in this half, the more Castleford are getting confidence. Got it. Oh, that was a good interception for Bob Beardmore. He read that so well. And a penalty, yes. Paul Harkin interfering at the play of the ball. Didn't allow Beardmore to play the ball to himself. He was stood behind him, tugged at his shirt. And Bob Beardmore just readjusting the jersey. Castleford supporters really getting behind their side now. Just that five-point gap, 11 points to six, trying to go with... put Rovers in charge again. Johnson. Good slip pass to Beardmore. Ian French. Oh, that's a good dummy. French again. This is the difference between the Castleford and the Hulkingston Rovers pack. Castleford putting two or three passes together in a very short space. Joiner. 15 minutes gone of the second half. Six tackle coming up. And I wouldn't be surprised to see another attempt to drop, but somebody's hurt. And certainly, Jeff Plummer, the Hulkinson Rovers physiotherapist, wanted here. He looks like number 12 there, Des Harrison. Possibly caught his head in the tackle. That doesn't look too good, Alec, does it? No, it doesn't, and I think one of the only times that the referee can stop the play, Ray, is when a man is in a dangerous position and uh, interfering with play. Now, obviously, this is one of those positions.
and the Castleford physiotherapist nicely coming on to it, help to attend to him. Oh, and this is a sad occasion in Wembley. A stretcher coming on. And John Lydiot, Roger Millward, just having a word. Well, John Lydiot will be keen to come on. Keen to show his paces. One or two clubs in Australia are looking at this lad. He's offered to go over there if a club will, will take him, so now is his chance. But sad to get a chance like this. And it looks like a shoulder injury. Well, I think there was a, a, a sheer accident. This has two forwards going here. John Joyner goes down here, and I think he comes in late. He's, he's not in the tackle yet. He's just coming in now. And I think one of his own men have actually hit him with the, his head uh, and caught him in the throat. Yeah, got it. it could possibly be a jaw injury, Alec, or he has broken his arm earlier in the year in the first round that we saw on the screen in January. But a sad exit there for Des Harrison. Getting a good round of applause from the crowd. Let's hope he soon recovers over the summer. And John Lydiot, eager to come on. Utility back. Restarted. Beardmore again, trying the same trick. But not this time. Well taken by David Laws. That kick from Beardmore, but well worth trying. And he was offside. Robin Whitfield are judging that Tony Marchant was in front of the ball when it was kicked. And we just hear that Des Harrison really has a very bad bout of concussion. I'm surprised though Roger Millwood didn't bring Gordon Smith on. He brought Gordon Smith on in the semi-final when Hull KR were lacking uh, Alec and he moved the ball about well, didn't he? Yes, I think so, Ray, and I think uh, he needs a little bit of uh, new blood now because certainly uh, if there has been any uh, worries about people like Gordon Smith coming on the field, I think I should send him on now because Gavin Miller and Smith are really, really struggling. This fella, number 13, he's normally buzzing all over the park today the biggest moment of his life and probably the biggest letdown. Well, let's hope Miller can get back in the game. He's a hard customer. And all credit to the lad, if he has got a leg injury, it takes guts to go out there with it. That's a good kick. Really Still honest. only five points difference between the two sides, despite Castleford's territorial dominance. Trying to go would put Rovers back in the driving seat. Kelly. Big second row, this Andy Kelly. Cost Rovers £60,000 from Wakefield Trinity. Miller to Dorohe. Oh, that's a good run, but a good cover tackle. Superb cover tackle there from Ian French. Covering behind the, the line to Lydiot. And a penalty. Yes, Robin Whitfield, the judging that John Dorohy struck somebody. Twenty minutes gone, Castleford still, eleven points to six. And doesn't John Dorothy look disconsolate with himself there? He's led away a prime position. Lack of discipline there. And that's very unusual in an Australian player. We, we get accustomed for their players to be very, very well disciplined on the field. Beardmore. I think really uh, Oakington Rovers Ray, are of only themselves to blame because they, they've had territorially uh, all the advantage, but uh, they're not creating the chances when they get in the danger area, and, and things like that should never happen at Wembley. Beardmore to Kevin Wall. Well, it's not a high-scoring game as yet, like 
last season's final, but certainly plenty of excitement here. The trophy still not anybody's destiny. Bob Beardmore, that's a good pass to his brother Kevin. These two twin brothers, very keen, not the first twins, the Drake twins, Bill and Jim played for Hull here. David Laws. Good run. Good recovery run there, out of defence by David Laws. Johnson. To Miller. Oh, well, well, I was just about to say well picked up, but I think referee Robin Whitfield must have sharper eyes than I've got. He judged the knock on there. Dorothy, the Rovers number six, working very, very hard to get this Hulkinson Rovers machine ticking. Joyner. Oh, good run from Joyner. He's got Jimmy Sandy with him. Well, he's beating. Now then, it's a race between Sandy and Furburn. And the little man's in. Yes, he's in. I think, like Alex Murphy said earlier in the match, this man is so small, five foot four. Well, here he is. Tom Thumb, good ball here now, as John Joyner gets the ball. This is magnificent standoff play. He's a big lad, this is what we were talking about this morning. But here's a little midget. Tom Thumb slips round him, slips past him. He's still a lot to do. George Furby looks as though he's going to nail him. He looks as though he's going to be nailed by Gary Clark. But obviously he's strong, and that's a good try. Yes, and I think this just wasn't pace from uh, Jamie Sandy here. He has an awful lot to do. We said he was five foot four. We said he was 11 stone. But just look at the determination in that lad. Sheer strength. George Furburn, he's no look coming across. And just look at the determination the lad gets there. They love that try up in East in Brisbane. And Sandy, well, he's pleased with himself. Castleford substitute there, David Rookley. Ready to be coming on. Kevin Ward geeing his forwards up. And Ketridge taking the kick whilst Gary Lord comes off. Very brave decision by Malcolm Reilly to play this youngster. Played very few games this year. An amateur not 12 months ago with the Stanley Rangers club, but how well he's been a credit to the amateur club and to Castleford itself. And the substitution allows David Ruckley to, to get a game as well. A difficult kick for Kettridge, but that strong breeze that we had earlier in the game has relapsed somewhat now. Attempts to swing it round, but no. But nevertheless, Alec at 15 points to six. Well, Castleford in control. Yes, 15-6, Ray, and uh, I think rightly so. They've looked the better side, they're, they've took the chances well, and really, looking at this old Kingston Rovers uh, side, you've got to ask yourself, uh, what can they do now? There's a lot of players out there who are either unfit or very, very tired. Yes. Just 15 minutes to go, and I think we can have a lot of sympathy there for Coach Roger Millward. I, I rang him this morning, and he could only name his side at 12 o'clock. He's had one or two players, John Dorry, he has been had a bout of flu, Peter Johnston's had a, a stomach bug, and Gavin Miller's had a leg strain. But it's not over yet. I think there are many of us, Alec, who've seen Challenge Cups go from one side to the other in the last 15 minutes. That's right, all you need is a try, but uh, th they're going to need it quickly, Ray, because uh, the more confidence Castleford gets, uh, they're holding the ball, they're supporting the man with the ball, and they're doing the basics right. And this is one man who is doing the basics right, Bob Beardmore, bringing these forwards up to the ball. But not like that. Now then, chance for Hulkingston Rovers. They've really got to do something with this ball. But that's significant there. Paul Harkin having to come back inside. No support player to put the ball to. 
Peter Johnson. That's a good pass to Kelly. Now, there's an example, Alec, looking for support and nobody coming on the ball. Well, that's right, and uh, that, that must tell you, Ray, that there's, there is men on that field who can't get, in, get to them positions because Andy Kelly was showing the ball for a good ten minutes there, and really, Old Kingston Rovers have got to come back in this game. High kick, high kick. Oh, well taken. Very well taken by David Rookley. He is a full-back normally. And just look at that little lad again, he's coming into the play. He's using all of that 11 stone to good effect. What a day for him. That's a bad drop. Puts Rovers back on the attack. To Miller. Mike Smith. Emma. Had a very sound game, this prop, Zouk Emma. Took a lot of the balls at first and second receiver, driving the game in. Harkin. Furburn linking up well. Kelly. Well, still going. Did well to keep hold of that Andy Kelly. Barry Prone. Oh, just look at the time. And he's given the try. Yes. What a surprise. Gary Prone. Well, he was deceived by that try earlier on with Bob Beardmore, and he's deceived everybody himself. It looked as if he was going into touch under a cloud there of the uh, the Castleford players. Well, I'll tell you what, Ray, he might have let a try in, but this try certainly took some scoring. This is very, very strong man. He's got three men round him and just pops it over the line. And I think here, Alec, we must compliment Robin Whitfield on his refereeing here. If we just look at these yellow shirts over the top, but just look at that arm. And Robin was positioned perfectly behind the line to his right-hand side. And four points from Gary Prome. Well, Ali, what we were saying, the cup can change hands in the last 15 minutes. 15-10 now to Castleford, and this goal could be the vital one. And that's right, and uh, it, Robin Whitfield here, uh, that was a great decision by him. He was right up with play. But uh, just going back to Wilkington Rovers now, John Donoghue, who's, who's kicking this goal, uh, Mr. Cool, and if he kicks this goal, Castleford are really going to be in a lot of pressure again because I've got a feeling Wilkington Rovers will throw everything at him. Ninety-nine goals to his credit. Can he celebrate his hundredth kick of the season with this one? A lot of pressure on the lad. No. Wrong direction. But still the di vital difference. Only five points between the two sides. A try and a goal from Rovers. But snatch the trophy. Eleven minutes to go. And could we have a dramatic eleven minutes now? This is the period when players begin to get tired, and I think here is a good tactical substitution, possibly. Gordon Smith, usually a scrum half or standoff, and I think Roger Milford is bringing this lad on, a fresh lad, to move the ball about the field. Well, I can't believe what I've just seen on, uh, from this uh, bench, Ray. Roger Millwood actually was bringing Gavin Miller off. He's brought Andy Kelly off, and I don't think he's too happy about it, and still left Gavin Miller on, who's not raised a gallop all afternoon. I don't think this fella's too happy. Well, happy or not, as you know, Alec, at St. Helens, the coach is in charge, and it's Smokings and Rovers with the ball in their hands. Gordon Smith. Miller. And there is some determination from Gavin. Johnson. Roger Millwood, I think, wanting to use uh, Gordon Smith to help move the ball out a little bit wider. I think he feels that Gary Prome, if he can get the ball, can do some damage. And the sixth tackle. Harkin. Now, straight down Rookley's throat. Somewhat of a surprise when 
This boy Rookley was relegated to substitute. There's got to be one flash from somewhere for Ulkington Rovers. They've got to have somebody with pace, with strength, who wants to run with the ball and uh, take Castleford on. Johnson. Looking to get that pass out. Notice how the Hulkingston Rovers side try to clamp the ball to Johnson's chest, stopping from getting those one-handed passes. Being French. Good run of this number 13 from Wyndham Manley, but not quite escaped the grips of the tackling. Beardmore chipped through again. To David Laws. Bob Beardmore there for Castlewood. I think playing the old soldier, chipped the ball through and immediately ran straight into the opposition an old trick and Castleford bringing a substitute on here now Stuart Horton the hooker played in all the previous cup rounds and I think one of the reasons for bringing these substitutes on uh, Alec the temperature really must be soaring down there now the sun's streaming down Yes, I, I think that is a problem there. There's a lot of tired lads out there, but uh, for Old Kingston Rovers, they have got to move the ball outside. They're just holding the ball. I mean, look at this, for instance, here now. Gary Prome tackled in possession when they've, all they've got to do is to move the ball out wide. They cannot score down the middle. Dorohy, nice sidestep from Dorohy. But look who's underneath it. Bob Beardmore and a lovely pass to Jamie Sandy. That was class rugby. And he's taking a knock in the process. Gary Hyde. Johnson. Good ball. But that was a wild pass to Miller. Can Hulkish and Rovers make something of it? Smith to Emma. Oh, he's made a break. But again, nobody with him. To Harkin now. Rovers back in the game. Mike Smith. Dorothy. Ferber. Paul Harkin again. But no. Three or four passes there put in. Pace at speed, but not really going forward. But this is the one man who is going forward. Having a good game, this lad. He's playing very well, uh, Zoukama, but uh, I, I still believe this game has got to be won outside. There's Gary Clark on the, on the wing there, even time man, and he's not had a pass all the game. Yes. George Ferber. Well covered by Ferber. To Dorothy. But he's stranded here, he's alone on this wing. And a good tackle by David Plange. Laws. And certainly these two wingmen for Hulkington Rovers, Laws and Clark, both Great Britain squad players, as dangerous as anybody in the game, but the ball just isn't getting to them. Emma. But a lot of pressure. Scored only 15 points to 10 for Castleford. Trying a goal would clinch it for Rovers. Pro. Good sensible play there from Harkin. It was the sixth tackle. Paul Harkin, number seven for Rovers, knew that if he played that ball, the ball would have been handed over to Castleford. So he's willing to risk the scrum, take a 50 50 ball. And substitute there, Kevin Beard ball coming off. Been injured for a long time, and I think Mal really realizes that. Beardball might be suffering a little bit with fitness. Five minutes left. Five points separating the two sides. Sandy. <laughs> well, Ray, you can't uh, hold this fella for, for art. He's had a tremendous game, the little lad. And really, when nobody's wanted to take the ball, he's always been third on hand. I'm surprised Castleford are not kicking this ball very, very deep upfield in the closing minutes now. And 
You don't really want to be caught deep in your own half. Ketteridge. And the sixth tackle coming up. Rovers streaming back to get this ball. That's a good kick. Had a good game, Bob Beardmore. I think he'll be one of my candidates for the man of the match. Oh, good run here from Clark. Well, that just shows the danger of this Gary Clark. He, Great Britain wingman, very, very dangerous, and yet never been given a running chance. Almost been like a spectator stood out there watching the game. But it's the first occasion I can remember him with the ball in his hands, Alex. He's angled the ball away uh, twice in uh, almost 80 minutes, once in the first half and once in the second. And if they're going to win the game, surely Ulkington Rovers have got to throw a caution to the wind. Well, if they want to win the game, they've got three minutes to do it. And they've got six tackles to do it in. Watkinson trying to set a captain's example at this stage Smith that's a good ball from Gordon Smith to Laws we just look at those yellow shirts streaming across there there were four Castleford defenders there covering Smith Lydia Miller Could we see a dramatic up and under here from the Rovers' side? Harkin, good ball to Prome. Two minutes left. Five points separating these two sides. That's a good ball. There's some height in that. Rookley's underneath it, and he's taking it well. Brilliant catch at this stage. The fate of the Challenge Cup could have hung on that ball, Alec. Yes, I think them's the, the catches you've got to take. And uh, young Rookley then never took his eye off the ball. And if anybody's won a cup, that could be the catch. To Ketteridge. Casavin will play through these tackles. Kevin Ward, what better man to take the ball at this stage. He'll hold it, he'll hook that ball close to his chest. One minute to go, and I'm sure this Castleford side can sense victory, but that's a bad kick. Very bad kick, that means a scrum down now, and it's head and ball to Hulkingston Rovers. They should take this ball. We will have some injury time. Harkin. To Miller, that's a good pass. To Smith. Lydiot. To Gary Clark. Oh, he's still running. Now then. Five tackles to go. Five points the difference. Coming up to injury time. Can Rovers do it? Gary Prome, that's a good dummy, he's still going, back to Dorothy, back to David Laws, he's got some space, oh, magnificent tackle, magnificent tackle by that Rookley, 40 minutes and up, but in injury time, last-ditch effort by Rovers, here's a chance to Gary Prome, and he's in, John Lydian's in, what drama, with an injury time, and John Lydiot's in for a try. What more could we have? Well, are we going to see the club clutched out of the way of Castleford? This is Old Kingston's first real attack. And substitute John Lydiard takes the ball, catches it, and dives over in the corner. Can he kick the goal? Well, 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 has there ever been a final quite like this? We're almost a minute into injury time, and John Lydiard goes over in the corner. 
And again, Robin Whitfield was decisive with that try, and I think there's a problem with that ball. Is he happy with the, the pressure? Yes, the ball has been changed. Now then, the man known throughout Australia, known throughout Great Britain as Mr Joel Cool, John Dorohy, has the chance to win the Challenge Cup for Hull Kingston Rovers. And if he misses, it surely must be Castleford's Cup. And he's kicking with a brand-new ball. Mr Whitfield must have been concerned about the pressure on the previous ball. Two minutes into injury time. 15-14 to Castleford. And just look at Malcolm Riley, David Sampson there and Roger Millwood. Everything hinges on this kick. I've never heard a roar like this. There are boos, there are cheers. Here he goes. It, it's not there. Castleford leap up in the air. Settle down, settle down. There's still time to play. One point between the two sides. Well, it was a tremendous kick for that lad. Every sympathy with him. I would like to have kicked it, Alec. No, I think uh, it was a tremendous effort by John Dorahey, but uh, it would have been injustice to Castleford because really, Ray, they've been the better team. They really deserve to be in front and really they deserve to win the Challenge Cup. One point in it. Can they come back? Gavin Miller, at all credit to this Hulk Kingston Rovers side. They look down and out, three minutes into injury time, and here's a chance. But a good tackle. Four tackles to go. Well, we said the last 15 minutes could change the destination of the, the Challenge Cup. Man of the match there, Bob Beardmore, and how well he's deserved it. Scored the try and directed the play. Oh, that's Castleford ball. But a knock-on. A huge roar of relief came up from the Castleford section of the crowd there, but a knock-on. And we've got three and a half minutes now into injury time. We did have a long stoppage, if we remember, with the, the sad stretcher case of Des Harrison. 15 points to 14. Everything to play for. A year's hard work, hard graft. Oh, this is good play. Dorothy. Out to Lydiot. Oh, but a good tackle. Superb tackle by Tony Marchant. Four minutes of injury time now. Dorothy again. To Mike Smith. But a knock on. There's the hooter. David Plans leaps in the air. I don't think Castleford can believe it. Tremendous ovation there from the Castleford crowd. And Bob Beardmore, number seven. Well, I think he had a point to prove to the Great Britain coach, Maurice Bamford, that he should be the man for the Great Britain spot. But he'll not be bothered now. He's won the Challenge Cup. And commiserations there. Nice to see the spirit that this game's been played in. But Castleford, aren't they delighted? This club founded 60 years ago. Winners on every appearance at Wembley. They disposed of Huddersfield in 1935, Salford in 1969, Wigan in 1970, and now they take Old Kingston Rovers scalp in 1986. And always they've been the underdogs, Alec, but they've deserved it. They've come to the bootmaker's rescue raid. The three to one favourites have been tumbled and uh, justifiably done. Because Castleford have gone about the game, they've done the job right, they've took the chances, and I think on the day they deserved the results. It's absolutely fantastic down below. There's yellow and black flags everywhere. You cannot believe it. There must not be a person left in Castleford. Yeah, so what drama we had there with that. Last kick, how delighted, I bet that little lad would have been in tears if that last kick of John Dorohy went over. Nice to see Roger Millwood, a Castleford lad himself, played for the Castleford club, 
played for Castleford schoolboys alongside the Castleford coach Malcolm Reilly. And that's a nice touch. Commiserations with his captain David Watkinson. In rugby league, you win some and you lose some. And this little man, Roger, has won every cup in the game. But sadly for him, not today. And Castleford on the way to receive the trophy. A local side, no costly overseas signings. Only Ian French and Jamie Sandy from Brisbane, two very moderately priced Australians. But that's the success Coach Mal really has done. He's blended the local talent. And John Joyner, well, I don't think he wants that Challenge Cup. £16,000 cash prize along with the Challenge Cup. And what a tradition the game created back in 1897 when the Cup was purchased for £60. It's worth a lot more than that now. And John Joyner to receive as winners from Royal Highness Princess Alexandra the Silk Cup Challenge Cup for 1986. And how well he's deserved it. It's the huge roar from the Castleford contingent. 20,000 have travelled down from the town. Two out of every three, and I'm sure those people left back in Castleford, they'll be dancing in the streets. There'll be celebrations in John Joyner's fish and chip shop tonight. And Bob Beardmore, the man of the match. And how well those youngsters have worked, every one of them. And none better there than Tony March in that, that try. Tremendous piece of centre play. David Plans did his bit. And Keith England worked and grafted hard. Ian French. And the man who took the brunt of all the Rovers tackling, Kevin Ward. And little Jamie Sandy. What a magnificent match he had. Rose to the occasion. And good to see Rook Leon. A proud man, John Joyner. Crowned a great career. 14 caps with Great Britain. Won every honour in the game. And now, finally, for the first time, he gets his hands on the trophy. And a disconsolate little mascot there. Doesn't he look upset, Alec? Well, this must be the most tragic uh, part of the day for this little fella. He's been up early this morning, and this must be a disappointment for also for David Watkinson. He knows today they've not done it, the spectators are disappointed, but no more so than these lads. Gary Clark, really, really disappointed. But it takes two sides to make a Challenge Cup final. And Hulkinson Rovers, they gave of their best. Andy Kelly, little Gordon Smith, he'd be pleased to have got on. And John Dorry, everything hinged on that kick, but what a kick to take. And George Ferber, Peter Johnson, and Zoo Kemmer, for me, one of Hulkingston Rovers' strongest running forwards. Paul Harkin, and what a triumph for this little mining town of Castleford. We had a fairy tale romance with Featherstone when they toppled Hull, and now here's the other mining town to topple the other Humberside giant, Hull Kingston Rovers. Crowd there. Well, there you see the scenes of the other main event of the day at Stamford Bridge, and you will notice, well, you will know that Kenny Dalglish much appreciated by one of the most knowledgeable sets of fans in the whole of sport. And Castleford certainly enjoyed their lap of honour. Let's enjoy it for just a few moments with them. Also make a thrilling final at Wembley. Peter Pitt joined the team on their victory procession through the town. 
It was a stroke of luck that the sun shone on Castleford's homecoming, but it had been sheer determination and not good fortune that won them the cup, and their triumph drew the crowds into the streets in such numbers that the procession through the town took twice the time anticipated. No one seemed to mind, least of all the players, some of whom had waited patiently for more than a decade for this Wembley triumph. Fourteen seasons I've been trying. And how many games have you now played for Castleford? About 450 or so. It's been a long wait, hasn't it? It's been a long wait, but it's well worth waiting for now. In the aftermath of the miners' strike, there hasn't been much to celebrate in Castleford, but they made up for lost time yesterday. This was Castleford's first cup victory for 16 years, so for many among the crowd of nearly 4,000, it was their first experience of cup fever. Some of the most rapturous applause was reserved for the little Australian, Jamie Sandy, who scored so dramatically in the cup final. He, it seemed, as much as the Challenge Cup, was the trophy supporters and teammates wanted to see held aloft on this day of celebration. Climatic Wembley finals for many a long year. Castleford had beaten Hull Kingston Rovers 15 points to 14. And what a welcome home the conquering heroes received. The glory trip with Cup held aloft took much longer than planned. The entire route was a sea of black and amber. When the crowd wasn't cheering and singing, the team was. Even coach Mal Reilly, who's seen it all before with Classy Cass, was surprised at the turnout. Well, ecstatic, really. It's, uh, you know, it's, there's so many people, it's unbelievable. It sort of does remind me a little bit now, back in 1970, in what, 69 and 70. But I just think there seems to be more supporters than ever. The town itself has been really down the past couple of years and that, but uh, especially with this win now, I think it's lifted everybody up. Bring the best out of us, this challenge, yeah, but it's not going to any other club now, it's staying with us. You want it forever, do you? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> it had been another Wembley showpiece, one of the most dramatic finals for years. Castleford led throughout, but Hull Kingston Rovers almost snatched victory with a last-minute goal attempt. How did the Castleford squad feel at that moment? Actually, I was watching it, I uh, closed my eyes and I prayed because, uh, you know, it, I've never felt like that in my life before. It was really, you know, nerve-wracking. I thought we'd lost it. I was heartbroken. I couldn't even watch the kick. I just had to cling on to my husband and wait for him to tell me whether this had gone over or not. And I was relieved when it didn't. <laughs> From 1 to 15, everybody worked tremendously hard. Everybody put the same effort in. And as I say, it's not just, a, you know, such as myself, Tony Match and Jamie Sandy for scoring the tries, but it was a team team effort. Ecstasy. It's just, it's something you can't put into words. It's a shame that every rugby league player, but best rugby league player, can't sample it. Every mile of the journey from Nottingley to Castleford Town Centre was packed with happy supporters. But the final furlongs were almost too much for the open-top double-decker bus. Everyone in Castleford, it seemed, had gathered outside the Civic Hall. It was the fourth time the team had been to Wembley as underdogs and the fourth time they'd come home with the Cup. Hardly surprising that the club's sponsors have just signed a new, bigger and better deal today, and even Castleford's mayor could hardly contain his pleasure. The weekend belonged to Castleford's glory boys of 86 and, of course, the army of supporters.